So good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our virtual presentation on our African adventure. Um, and I've realized over the last couple of weeks that I haven't actually introduced myself. Uh, you've probably seen my photo on the advertisement, so, but I'm Leanne House, a tour coordinator with Westworld Tours, and I'm happy to be here with you this morning uh, to hear all about this bucket list destination. So before we jump into the presentation, I have a couple things to mention on the next slide. So everyone's on mute. Um, if you'd like to ask a question or two, please feel free to type it into the question and answer box located at the bottom of your screen. At any time during the presentation, uh, you can ask, ask your question and we'll get to it at the end. If you've joined us from Facebook, you can type your question into the comment section and we'll try to get to that as well at the end of the presentation. Throughout the presentation, we will be conducting a couple of pop-up polls asking for your participation by making a selection. If you are viewing from Facebook, the polls will not be visible, but you can answer the question in the comment section. Your input is greatly appreciated and will help us with future presentations and tour planning. And here's our first pop-up poll. So please let us know if you would like to sign up for our email newsletter. From Facebook, you can hit the message button and send us your email address. And you'll receive, uh, you'll receive invites to future presentations as well as timely information on new tours. We promise not to inundate you with emails and you can unsubscribe at any time. There may be a few more emails than normal right now as we keep everyone up to date on our virtual presentation series. And we'll just wait a couple seconds here while people finish the poll. Yeah. And uh, I think we can move on now. We'll tell you a little bit about Westworld Tours before we get started. As Western Canada's premier motor coach touring company, Westworld Tours has been serving Canadians from coast to coast with escorted travel throughout North America and around the world since 2000, celebrating our 20th anniversary last year. We offer quality components to all tours, including modern comfortable coaches, professional tour directors, experienced courteous drivers, baggage handling and excellent accommodations. Our tours include all the sites and attractions that are important to our clients. We also provide several meals throughout the tours. Thousands of passengers have chosen Westworld Tours first class style of motor coach touring, enjoying the great value, security and stress free environment, all while making new friendships along the way. We receive a high level of satisfaction from our passenger surveys. And I know our tour directors love seeing familiar faces on our tours. And you should see another pop up uh, on your screen. We would like to know how many here have traveled with us before. For those of you joining us from Facebook and not able to see the pop up, you can simply um, type into the comments if you've uh, yes or no, if you've joined us on a tour before. And I can't see the poll numbers here, but maybe Dean can give us an indication of how many new newcomers we have and how many have actually uh, it, it's 50, 50, 50. It's uh, oh, okay. yeah, exactly 50, 50. That's pretty oh, cool. That's great. Welcome everybody. Welcome all the new, the new folks joining us today. We're, we're happy to have you and hope we can travel with, or you can travel with us sometime soon. And for all of you that have traveled with us before, welcome back. And we can't wait to get on the road with you again soon. So I'll move on to the next slide here with um, just talk a little bit about uh, COVID. Um, so as everyone knows, COVID has turned the world upside down with travel impacted as much or more than any other industry. With the health and safety of our travelers and staff being our highest priority, we're continually monitoring the situation. Having canceled all tour departures up until the end of July this year. And with that, we understand that your money you trusted in us uh, may be better used for other things at this time. And to respect that, we have refunded everyone booked on a canceled tour. Doesn't feel right issuing future travel credits. After all, it's your money and you should decide when and where to travel, not us. So now we're gonna talk a little bit more about Africa. So why not check a few more countries off your bucket list with this adventure through South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Botswana. Our African tour features urban exploration in the picturesque cities of Johannesburg, Livingstone, and Cape Town. 
the South African culture is one of the most ethnically diverse in the world, adding to the ambiance and wonder of this action-packed tour. Heading into the countryside, ecological adventures, including safaris, game drives, bushwalks, and river cruise safaris, balance the urban and rural experience. You will visit Kruger National Park, Chobe National Park, and a sunset cruise on the Zambezi River. See one of the seven wonders of the world at Victoria Falls. Don't miss this exciting opportunity to visit Africa. And now I am pleased to introduce you to Coral Carpenter Romanchuk. Coral has been with Westworld Tours for 20 years, having traveled the globe extensively, setting foot on all seven continents, bringing to her role as Senior Tour Director a wealth of knowledge and experience. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Cora. And I'm pleased to introduce you to our special guest all the way from South Africa. Glenn is here. Uh, Glenn has traveled South Africa far and wide and his knowledge of the destination are beyond imaginable. With that being said, Glenn, welcome and you can take it away. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, and pleased to meet you all. Good morning to you, or should I say good evening from Cape Town <laughs> in South Africa. We're live, it is now eight minutes past six or 18.08 South African time. So we are eight hours ahead of you, of you folks. Just to give you an indication as well, we in autumn, you guys are in spring. We are opposite seasons. The temperatures in autumn in Cape Town have been relatively mild and mild we would say is around about 20 to 24 degrees. So we're still in autumn for another month, and then only we start expecting cooler, real cooler weather coming along. Autumn is a very good time to visit South Africa because the winds are not blowing in the Western Cape and the rain up north, and specifically where this itinerary is going, is also subsided. So what I've got on the screen here is a map. It's always good to show a map of where we're going and what are we doing. This is Southern Africa. So Southern Africa, excuse me, consists of a few countries on the, right on the southern tip of the African continent. You've got South Africa first and foremost. To our east, we've got Mozambique, which is mostly a beach destination and for honeymooners type visitors. We've got Zimbabwe right above us, north of us, the main attraction being Victoria Falls. We've got Zambia in the, in the far north. We've got Botswana and to our west, we've got Namibia. So just to give you an idea of how this program is flowing. You'll be arriving into Johannesburg and myself and Leanne were speaking just before we started and this program is actually arriving on the 3rd of May 2022. So right now in 12 months time this program will be in my country which is damn exciting for me. So you'll be arriving into Johannesburg, we'll spend three nights there um, and I'll go through the program what we'll be seeing and then we'll do an overland coach trip um, which is about a five, six hour drive with two stops, comfort stops, to the Kruger Park region. The Kruger Park region is this green area here, which is adjacent to the country of Mozambique. To give you an idea of the size of Kruger Park, we always compare it to the size of Israel, the country. That is how large the Kruger National Park is. We're spending four nights in this area. Then we will fly from this area, clear customs and fly directly into Zambia. And this is our second country we're visiting. And this is what's so, so nice about this program. We're going to be visiting four countries in Southern Africa. We'll spend one night in, in Zambia, in, in Livingston. We'll, we'll cross over into uh, Victoria Falls on the Zimbabwe side. And from there, we will drive across the border into Botswana and spend another few nights there. And from there, we will fly down to Cape Town where we spend the, the last part of the program. Cape Town, of course, the most scenic city in South Africa. Everybody spends the most time in, in Cape Town. Um, and what is included in this program? What everybody wants. Safari number one, scenic beauty number two. And we're gonna, and, and thirdly, the cultures of, of Southern Africa, which we're gonna show you. So this is 17 days, 16 nights on the ground, folks. Then you've got to add your flights in and your flying time out, out of South Africa. So looking at the program, keep in mind, you're actually gonna get four stamps in your passport as you're going through. Um, 
Just on the motor coach transportation, as a ground handler, we also own and operate our own luxury fleet of, of coaches in Southern Africa. These are our own vehicles. They range from 32 right up to 50 seaters, and we'll be using them in Cape Town, Johannesburg, the Kruger Park area. In the Kruger Park and on safari, we'll be using open vehicles as that is the whole feeling of being in the open vehicle in a, in a game reserve. But just to give an idea, this is the most modern luxury fleet which is available in South Africa. We've got in the region of about 280 vehicles throughout the country. Starting in Johannesburg, Johannesburg is where you'll be arriving. It is the financial capital of South Africa. Um, we'll be visiting the famous Soweto Township. This is where Nelson Mandela lived. We'll be going to the very popular apartheid museum where you need up to three hours to move through the museum with interaction tv screens and moving through the old white regime apartheid until democracy in 1995. it is very moving and very gripping we'll be going to mandela house now that is the the matchbox house that nelson mandela grew up in and lived with his wife with his wife winnie mandela and right down the road from his house we'll be visiting another house but not going in that and that is the other Nobel Peace Prize winner. We have two Nobel Peace Prize winners in South Africa that lived on the same street and that one is Archbishop Desmond Tutu. We'll be also driving past the Hector Peterson Memorial um, and also give you leisure time in Johannesburg after the long flight. Um, further on, we'll be going off to the Kruger Park, and I'll explain to you what we'll be doing in that area. Of course, the Big Five Safari. What is a Big Five Safari? It's the five most difficult animals to hunt in, in Africa. The lion, the leopard, the rhino, the elephant, um, and, and the buffalo. Those are the Big Five animals. So your hotel in Johannesburg, a very good four-star. We call it Garden Court, Santon City. It is not downtown Johannesburg. We don't stay downtown Johannesburg. We stay in a suburb area called Santon, which is about 25 kilometers north of Johannesburg. And on the leisure day, and the reason why we use Santon is lots of time for shopping. Some of the best malls in Africa, shopping malls. Diamonds, of course, is what people do come and look for, and gold, a lot of that, because we are the country that, that discovered that. Um, a very good four-star property. Um, we'll have the day at leisure and then we'll be going to Soweto. These are cooling towers, old cooling towers, which they've converted with beautiful local cultural art. Um, and you can actually bungee jump from that if, if you have the, uh, the energy and the, and, and the will. Democracy is the word which changed South Africa in 1994 when we had our first democratic uh, uh, elections and every person in this country could vote. And you'll be living through what we went through to become a truly democratic country with the most modern constitution written as well. This is the Mandela House in Soweto and Soweto is extremely safe. We go there with every tour group um, and people get out of the coaches and you interact with the people. There's about 4 million people who live in Soweto. Soweto is not a black cultural word, it stands for Southwestern Townships. Um, so we'll be spending some time in Soweto. You'll visit the Mandela House to see how small the house is that they lived in. From there, we will be moving across to the Kruger Park. Like I said, about a five, five and a half hour drive, and we're staying in a private game lodge. This is a game lodge adjacent to the Kruger National Park, which has the big five animals, and we've got four nights. I mean, normally you would spend three nights at a, at a game lodge, but we have got four nights. Included every day is wake up at 5.30, 6.30 in winter, in May months, it could be 6 or 6.30. You have coffee and rusks, and you go out on a two and a half to three hour open vehicle safari. The safari vehicles take nine people, plus the driver and the tracker. Um, with COVID at the moment, certain lodges only fill them up with four or six people. Come May next year, the situation could be much better. So you've got your morning game drive from 6.30 until about 8. You come back for a hearty breakfast. You're at leisure at the lodge to use the pool. You can go on walking safaris as well with the ranger, which is very interesting. You have a light lunch, a siesta in the afternoon. And by 4, 4.30, you go out on your late afternoon evening game drive 
with sundowners in the bush, which is fabulous. They pack that all in there, your favorite drink. They ask you prior. And then you return to the lodge with the spotlight to see the nocturnal animals. So four nights um, is, is definitely a, a highlight, um, just having arrived into Johannesburg and already seeing it. We leave um, Shiduli Game Reserve and we travel a bit south, which is closer to the airport for the next morning's flight. Hippo Hollow Country Estate. Um, they also have animal, uh, elephants on their property. I've stayed at this property. It is fantastic, relaxing. But before we get there, we, I want to entice you with some pictures of, of, of animals which are available. The lions, the zebras, the wild dogs and hyenas. We see scenic beauty like this in the area that we drive to. We're going to visit Burke's Luck Potholes. We're going to visit... Um, the, the, the Mac Mac Falls we're going to visit and see what we call God's window. Um, and this whole day tour is called the Panorama Route. This is God's window, which is very, very spectacular uh, viewing. From there, the next morning, like I showed on the map, we're flying out and we're going to Victoria Falls. Now, Victoria Falls stretches from Zambia side through to the Zimbabwe side. But we're first going to the Zambian side in the town of Livingston, named after the famous explorer, David Livingston. And we're spending a night um, in a lodge I'm going to show you now. Down at the bottom of the picture, you could see the spray of the falls here between the, between the bushes. The reason why this program is also so good, because in May month, folks, the falls are in full flow. Um, during September, October, November, the falls are pretty dry. You only see it on the one side, but this is the reason we're going to both sides Zambian side and the Zimbabwe side to see the falls from both sides. So perfect timing to see the falls. The rain from, from December comes down all the way from Angola, travels through uh, uh, Botswana and into Zimbabwe, Victoria Falls. We're going to do historic town visit of David Livingston Town. We're going on a sunset cruise, which is fantastic. The guided tour of the falls from both sides, the Zambia side and the Zimbabwe side, and then your first real Boma dinner. This is the lodge we're using on the Zambian side, the David Livingston Lodge. I stayed at this lodge in 2019, nobody traveled in 2020. And you come back in the evening and you sit on that deck. It's on the Zambezi River, beautiful lodge. Then we cross over, and this is the bridge we cross over between Zambia and Zimbabwe. Um, there's also a train ride that goes over the bridge and you can buy optional tours having dinner on the train where the train stops in the middle of the bridge. We're staying at a five-star property. Now, going back, I should have mentioned in the beginning that the program is mainly four-star, very good four-stars with, with um, the Victoria Falls Hotel, which is a highlight of five-star. This is a colonial hotel built by the British many hundreds of years ago as they were exploring from South Africa through to what was then called Rhodesia, today it's Zimbabwe and Zambia. And Cecil John Rhodes wanted to build the railway line from Cape Town all the way through to Cairo. He didn't get further than Zambia. So this is the beautiful, beautiful Victoria Falls five-star hotel. This is the picture where you sit on the deck in the afternoon having high tea and you could see the falls and the spray. You can actually see the bridge from the hotel. So two nights in this fabulous property, We'll do a visit of the falls from this side as well. Here is a little bridge which um, you get completely drenched. They give you, do give you anoraks to, to wear, but it's a highlight. It's a little slippery on that bridge as well, but you've got to go and try and do that. And in Victoria Falls, there's a lot of other things to offer. This is an image of the Boma dinner. This is really a highlight in Zimbabwe on the second night when we're in the town of Victoria Falls. It's loud, it's noisy, but it's fabulous food. And there is entertainment and everybody gets a wrap as this lady is wearing the cloth piece. You, you put it onto you and everybody gets a drum after they've been eating and they start teaching you how to do the drumming. It's colorful. It's noisy. They've even got somebody who throws the bones for you. It's some gorma, as we call him, and he tells you your, your future. As you can see, colorful and interactive. And the show lasts for about, I'd say, 40 minutes. They do take a break that you can uh, uh, relax a bit. 
um, but definitely a highlight once you in Victoria Falls. Also in Victoria Falls, there are other things which we didn't put in the program. You can buy them optional because there could be time. A helicopter trip for, I think it's 13, 13 to 15 minutes, very popular over the falls, spectacular, wonderful for photographers. There's adventure activities um, for, the, for the younger or the more active people if they're keen on it. Whitewater rafting, zip lining over the falls. Fly Fox is one of them they also call. Then, guys, we've now been in South Africa, we've been in Zambia, we've been in Zimbabwe, and then we do a short road trip. I'd say it takes maximum an hour with two border crossings, one on the Zimbabwe side and one on the Botswana side, and we're going to the Chobe region in the town of Kasani, which is just across the, um, the border from Zimbabwe. Here we're going to spend two nights, and what is Chobe known for? more game viewing and fantastic game viewing. The lodge we're using is situated on the Zambezi River. And there you can see an aerial view of the lodge. We've got two nights and we're going to do safaris in the famous Chobe Game Lodge. Um, this, this lodge is situated in the little town and I mean little town, all the lodges in the town are on the, on the river. You can go on evening, further evening sunset cruises as well if you want to. That photo of me on the intro is me on the Azambezi River with my T-shirt on with the elephants in the background. Just to give you an idea of what, what it is like, predominantly on the river, the elephants and the hippos on the land. You will So we'll have land safari and we'll have water safari. We do the, the water safari in the afternoon where the sun sets because that's more spectacular. In the morning we go out when it's still cool enough and we can see the animals moving around a close-up of a big Ellie, and you'll see how they cross the river in the afternoon from the Namibian side across and how they help the baby along. It is fantastic. Then we are coming to Cape Town, the most scenic and most beautiful city in South Africa, voted how many times by Condé Nast and others as one of the must-see cities. This is taken photo taken from the top of Table Mountain on a clear day, I want to just use my cursor there. You can see the famous Robben Island, um, which we have included in the program. We are based down here in the center of the city. I live in this area just under the T. And this is taken from the top where we will be including going up by cable car. Um, Cape Town is the oldest city in South Africa, um, established in 1652 when the Dutch arrived. What we're doing in Cape Town, definitely Table Mountain, which you can see in the background and clear picture uh, behind me as well. We're going to do a city tour to see all the old Dutch influences and, and the British influences. We're going to Robben Island. Robben Island is famous for the prison where Nelson Mandela spent nearly 27 years. I think about 25 out of his 27 years. You'll be able to go into his cell to see his matchbox cell. You'll be able to see the lime quarries where they were digging and made to do forced labor. We'll do the famous Cape Peninsula tour, where we'll go to the southernmost western tip of the African continent, and where by tradition, two oceans meet, the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean. That's by tradition. They actually meet a bit further up the African coast. And then we'll visit our famous winelands. Um, during all the apartheid years, we were not exposed or we could not uh, uh, sell and promote our South African wines. Remember the French came to teach us how to produce wine. Um, they came to South Africa as well and the French also tried to make it a colony. They were not successful, but they did see the rich soil of the area we live in and the wines. Now I know in Canada, because I travel to Canada to come and see my customers at least twice a year, you will always find South African wine on the shelves in your bottle shops or as we call them, bottle stores. The hotel, we're using the Southern Sun Waterfront. Beautiful four-star property right outside the biggest tourist attraction in South Africa called the Victoria and Alfred Waterfront. Not Albert, Alfred. Victoria came here with her cousin, Alfred. Um, biggest tourist attraction as it has all the shops and activity in the area. This was an old harbor or it's a working harbor that they re-established. Lovely property. I've stayed in this property, although I live in the same city. Um, and they have shuttle buses that take you into the waterfront at night as well, which is going to take you a three to five minute drive. 
very important to do the cable car by uh, vernicular. Um, those cable cars, there are two of them, one up, one down, take four and a half minutes to reach the top, take 65 people on a good day if there's no COVID, and the floor actually rotates once round until you get to the top. So once everybody gets in, everybody wants the window, but you're all going to get this, the surrounding view. We spend some time up there and you get excellent photography. And then we do the city tour. This is just to give an indication of what the old city looks like. We call this Boer Kaap, meaning above the Cape. And this is where the slaves that were brought in from Indonesia, Madagascar, Malaysia, lived and built their own houses and made them very colorful to uplift themselves. In this area, we have about 11 mosques. And it is predominantly up to today still a Muslim community that live in the Boer Kaap. Um, that is an aerial view of Robben Island, where we will go by ferry from, from the city area, from this area, from the waterfront. It takes about 45 minutes into the harbour, and the tour takes about two and a half hours. If we're lucky, we might get a tour guide, which was an ex-prisoner, but there are not many left of them that now act as tour guides anymore. Um, very interesting, very moving excursion. We will, on the Cape Peninsula tour, encounter something in Africa which you won't encounter anywhere else in the world, and that is Boulder's Beach. And you are guaranteed to view the jackass penguins, as we call them. And they live in this beach area, um, and you guaranteed in the afternoon that they come out of the water. And you can get close to them, but you're not allowed to touch. Um, as many places in the world, we do not touch, ride, interact, or feed animals at all. Um, so that's a, another highlight, the Winelands area, which is about 45 to 50 minutes drive outside of Cape Town. The Winelands areas consist of Franschhoek, named after the French, French Corner, Stellenbosch, the second oldest town in South Africa, and Paul. We'll do two wine estates, we'll uh, taste wine, we'll do a cellar tour, and we'll see the old Cape Dutch architecture, which still very much exists. Some tourists in the beautiful uh, uh, Winelands areas, um, and we'll be tasting, we select the wine estates, but if there are some connoisseurs, we're always open to suggestions if somebody wants us to suggest a wine estate. We will vet them, of course. Um, I'm going to play a little video for you just to entice you a, bit, a little bit of South Africa, and I hope it shows on, on that side as well. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very, very much. Um, I know there are going to be questions. And at this stage, I'm going to hand over to Coral. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. That was very interesting. Um, definitely one of my bucket lists, and I can't wait to get there one day. But Coral, I'll let you uh, take over now. 
All right, that was so exciting, Glenn. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you joining us uh, today. And uh, I'm sure you all feel like I do right now, just super excited for this very exciting destination. Uh, we're certainly all looking forward to traveling again, no question about that. Uh, my part this morning, everyone, is uh, I just wanna talk to you just a little bit about the advantages of uh, a group travel on international destinations uh, such as this. Uh, those of you who joined us previously, um, we've been talking a lot about uh, traveling as a group, uh, but when we're traveling internationally, uh, the role of the tour director changes a little bit, but it's still definitely an advantage uh, to be traveling together as a tour group. And in fact, I think for a lot of people, it's a, sort of a sense of comfort. There's a, something uh, just a little comforting just makes people feel a little better uh, traveling uh, together in a group, especially in foreign lands far from home. Um, I've been very fortunate to uh, do a lot of international traveling and quite a lot of that has been with tour groups with Westworld. Uh, what I can tell you is that our role as a tour director changes a little bit when we're traveling internationally. I would say we take a little bit more of a background role where uh, here in North America, uh, it's very much a foreground role, of course, that your tour director is playing. Um, definitely that will change a bit when we get overseas. Reason being, we of course will have a, a fantastic local guide who will be joining us. Depending on our tours internationally, sometimes we might have uh, multiple local guides or we might be with the same one for the entire time. In any case, uh, your Westworld tour director assumes a little bit more of a uh, background role. Uh, one thing that we're definitely there to do is take care of just the day-to-day -day needs that come up uh, with our own passengers. And you never know what's gonna come up uh, from day to day. Uh, but not just that, another thing that's really important that we're there to help with is coordination. I sort of like in our role as a director as to kind of, you know, uh, almost uh, changing into a uh, coordinator role in a sense. Uh, we're helping to coordinate uh, just, uh, you know, an easy uh, kind of transition between uh, local tour providers, if that happens to be the case, uh, transportation, uh, dealing with uh, various, you know, companies for the motor coaches or that kind of thing, and, uh, and also the events as well, too. So we're helping to coordinate the events and doing our best to make things run smoothly and, uh, and seamlessly for our, uh, our Westworld guests. Uh, another part of that is uh, navigating through airports. And that's something that, uh, you know, for some of our travelers can be a little bit intimidating. Certainly there are always people who uh, have traveled extensively and it's not a big deal, but for some, just uh, traveling together as a, as a tour group through airports far from home, uh, even that is a, a sense of comfort, I would say. Uh, some of the things that uh, we're going to talk about, you know, as a group are things that are really obvious to you. You know, you're going to remember your comfortable shoes, I'm sure. You're going to remember your uh, photo devices, your, uh, you know, your laptop, your cameras, your cell phones, of course. Things like that are super obvious. Uh, sunscreen, perhaps. Um, you know, maybe a rain jacket or a gravel or, or sea bands, possibly for motion sickness. Uh, some things, though, that uh, are a little less obvious are or other things that were there just to remind you of, you know, for example, what kind of adapter do I need uh, in this particular country to uh, plug in my uh, my cell phone at night in the in the hotel room? So things like that are uh, are obviously very very important. Um, how do I call home? <laughs> that might be another one. Uh, and then there's the most challenging question of all that we get: How much money should I bring? <laughs> that one comes up, and uh, obviously that varies uh, a lot from person to person. So. Uh, that's always a fun one. Um, also advice too that uh, that we like to uh, to help you with. Uh, just as an example, you know, not only are you carrying your uh, very important documents like your passport, um, a photocopy of your passport too is always a really good idea. I know some people are so wonderfully organized, they're carrying photocopies of their credit cards and everything. And in a situation where there ever was a lost passport, well, having that photocopy would uh, probably make uh, the process a little bit, uh, a little bit simpler for us. 
Um, or here's another uh, little tip, uh, you know, never leave uh, your hotel, especially in a foreign country, but this can apply uh, in North America too, without knowing the address of the hotel we're staying at, or simply grabbing a business card from the uh, front desk uh, in case you uh, have a nice leisurely dinner late in the evening or find yourself walking down too many streets and uh, not knowing quite how to get back to your hotel again. I've actually done that twice, I can think of uh, in my life, once in Barcelona, once in Buenos Aires. So that's actually a really good little uh, little tip. So things like that, as I say, that are a little bit less obvious, perhaps, uh, that were there just to give you, uh, you know, suggestions and things like that uh, as your tour director. Uh, something that uh, I am a huge advocate for uh, of Westworld tours is uh, the phone call that we make as tour directors to all of our passengers and guests uh, prior to the tour. Uh, I have several times over my 20 years with Westworld have had a tour passenger say to me, I've been on a lot of trips and this was the first time I've ever received a phone call from the guide or director ahead of time before the tour. And I have to tell you that really warms my heart when I hear that. Now, there may be other companies that do this as well. I'm, I'm not sure, but apparently it's not that common, uh, but it's something we always do with Westworld. Your guide, uh, whether it's myself or any of our other guides will call you ahead of time uh, before the tour. And uh, there's, again, lots of things that we might want to talk about uh, before the uh, the trip. For one thing, if we haven't met you before, it's a fantastic icebreaker uh, for yourself and for us as the tour director as well, just uh, to have the chance to chat before we meet each other in person. Uh, for, uh, you know, old friends, uh, our former clients, it's also just a great way to catch up as well too. And uh, there's, uh, you know, things that we want to do, like go over your documents with you. Just say, hey, just want to make sure that you have all these papers in order. Now, of course, at this point, your travel agent has uh, very likely uh, done that, gone through all the important papers that you need for the trip. But we still like to reiterate that on the phone ahead of time before we actually leave home. And we might talk about things like uh, currency, you know, how much currency are you bringing? Uh, what are you relying on for methods of payment? You're relying on, you know, mostly credit cards, always good to have a bit of a local currency with you on the tour, that sort of thing. Uh, time zone differences as well. Uh, Glenn was just saying a few minutes ago, uh, eight hour time difference uh, between us and South Africa. So that's actually important to think about. Even uh, I was smiling to myself uh, earlier, the season of the year. <laughs> of course, uh, that's definitely something uh, to think about as well, too. Um, the phone call is also a good opportunity for us to answer your questions uh, before your trip. And this is always important, but maybe it's even just a little bit more important on an international tour where you may have, uh, you know, more, more questions. Um, you know, how many hours is the flight, uh, for example? Uh, a big one that comes up often for us uh, on the phone ahead of time is, you know, how big can my carry-on be? That sort of thing. Thinking about the airplanes, thinking about uh, the motor coaches, uh, that sort of thing. And, you know, for some people, maybe just a little bit of uh, apprehension. And we're there just to kind of ease you uh, through that, uh, that apprehension. There's so many things to think about. Uh, there, there really is. Local culture, for example, is, uh, is huge. But sometimes maybe it's just the jet lag tips that we have to offer, which we do, uh, especially on, uh, on uh, tours like this, where we're flying a, a long, long way uh, around the world. Jet lag tips, travel tips, maybe even packing tips, and, uh, you know, and luggage tips as well. So just a few of the things that we talk about on uh, that all important phone call. Glenn, can I get you to uh, advance to the next slide for me, please? If I, if I may just add, um, add in something quickly, Carl, just on the currency. So in South Africa, we use the currency called the South African Rand, R-A-N-D. The exchange rate is very, very much in your favor. It's approximately 11 to the Canadian. So you're going to get a lot for your buck. If you're bringing US dollars, you're going to get 14.4 against, against the Rand. Our, our currency is very weak. Visa and MasterCards are accepted everywhere. 
Amex and diners, a little bit more difficult. People in South Africa don't often take diners and Amex because the fees are much higher. So that's important to know. Um, tipping, uh, Coral, was another thing, and I know West will, will give that advice. We tip 10% for a meal when we go out for a meal. If you think the service was better, tip more. Um, where we, meals are included in the program, the tips would have been included as well. Um, I'm talking about your, your own meals where you purchase outside. Um, Uber's freely available in South Africa. There's even our Bolt and another company coming online as well. Wi-Fi in hotels and at lodges, readily available. Um, sometimes it might be a bit slower in our neighboring countries, but Wi-Fi is a given in properties nowadays. No Wi-Fi on the transportation vehicles in South Africa. Because of the different landscape that we travel through, you lose the signal via the next mountain, and then you go through a dip and you lose it, and people just get upset with it altogether. We've tried it how many times on our vehicles, but we've, we've, we've left that off. Um, people say, but you, you're so good, why can't you have Wi-Fi? You've come on a holiday. Do the Wi-Fi with your friends and mates when you're in your room in the evening. <laughs> Upload your photos then. Sorry, Carl. <laughs> no, it's all good. I appreciate that, Glenn. There you go. All excellent advice. <laughs> uh, could you uh, go on to the next uh, screen for us, please? This one? Uh, there we go. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, just a couple more things from me, everyone. Uh, oh, no, just uh, back there. Let's go back one slide. The one with oh, all the... Other direction. <laughs> uh, Forward. Two back. There we go, that's the one, perfect. All right, uh, just a couple more things uh, for me, everyone. Uh, so uh, one more thing that we actually do uh, talk about when we make that phone call ahead of time before the tour. Uh, nope, we're, uh, we're just on the wrong slide there. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, we'll, uh, we'll advance to that next slide momentarily. Uh, there we go, perfect. Uh, you you can see a couple of shots there of our group actually gathered in an airport uh, in a country far from home. Uh, we have a rendezvous airport uh, for our groups as we're leaving Canada. And again, that's something that we will go over with you on the phone just to confirm where you're meeting us. If it just so happens that you're from the same area as uh, your tour director, you may be traveling right from home. But of course, you know, tour passengers are coming in from different places. So typically what happens is we're gonna be looking for you. Uh, be at the Toronto airport, sometimes Calgary, uh, definitely sometimes Vancouver as well. We will be watching for you in that rendezvous airport. And then from there, from Toronto or wherever it happens to be, flying together as a group. On that note, uh, you'll be watching for the tour director's Westworld tour sign. There's a couple of pictures uh, with the Westworld tour sign uh, there. We all carry those as tour directors. I carry mine quite religiously. I know I like to have it up for the group always in airports but sometimes on a walking tour of course even if the local guide has one I'm still carrying that Westworld sign as well too uh, and just when we're navigating around in uh, in foreign cities so uh, so we've got that sign up uh, just uh, helping you always know uh, where you are when we're in a you know a crowded area that sort of thing and uh, lastly for me um, I just wanted to say everyone we like to do our best just to help the tour go just as smooth smoothly and seamlessly as we possibly can. I often say in travel, just like life, uh, things don't go perfect 100% of the time. Things can happen. You know, somebody trips on a jagged edge on a sidewalk and falls and scrapes their elbow. Somebody's sick one day. You know, we're dealing with some kind of document situation. These are all things uh, that have happened and, and more. So we're there just to make everything go as smoothly as we possibly can, uh, just so that, uh, you know, things are as close to perfect as we can for you. It's our job to do that for you so that you can do, we hope, nothing but focusing on enjoying your vacation. And uh, that is our role on a trip such as this. So thank you. Perfect. You can move on to the next slide. Um, I just wanted to thank both you, uh, Glenn and Coral, for joining us this morning and sharing your knowledge of South Africa and the other countries we'll be visiting on this tour with us. And Coral for sharing 
you know, just your experience and uh, keeping all of our passengers safe and in the in the right spot and never missing a, a tour. Um, so now uh, we hope that everyone with us this morning has enjoyed our presentation and you can join us as we continue our virtual presentation series. Uh, next week, you'll find us on May 12th at 7 p.m. in Churchill. Coral will be joining us live from Churchill. She's actually heading up there, I think, later today. Mm -hmm. And uh, on May 19th at 1 p.m., Cindy's going to join us with special guests from Ireland uh, to talk about the Women Explorer Shamrock and Shenanigans tour to Ireland. And on May 26th at 1 p.m., we're going to be joined by our friends from Iceland and to hear more about that bucket list adventure. And now if another poll is going to pop up, um, or sorry, just uh, in, the, in the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen, let us know what tour you would like to see a virtual presentation on, or maybe it's a destination that you would like to add us to add to our lineup. Uh, we appreciate your feedback on, on all that. And moving on to the last slide, we just want to thank everyone for taking the time uh, to join us this morning and we hope you found this presentation very informative. Um, and for those of you that are joining us on the Africa tour next year, like Glenn said, one year from today, you will be in Johannesburg, starting the tour of a lifetime. This is definitely a bucket list uh, adventure and uh, one that I look forward to getting to one day too. And so in a couple of days, you guys will get an email, uh, just a follow up uh, with a link to this tour itinerary. Uh, and, or you can visit our website at westworldtours.com for more information on this tour or any of our other tours. And now we're going to uh, open it up and answer some of the questions. Uh, if you aren't able to stick around and you have a question, you can send us an email at information at westworldtours.com. Okay, let's see what we have here. So Diane says, it looks amazing. I agree, Diane, this looks like a really great trip. Uh, what level of physical activity is involved? Do we need vaccinations ahead of time? Um, I will speak to this a little bit. Um, so there is a little bit of physical activity getting in and out of the Ranger vehicles and that kind of thing. And like Glenn said, there's some walking. Uh, he can probably speak a little bit more to that. Um, and as far as vaccinations, there are some that... Um, are, I don't think there's any that are required at this time, um, but there are- Malaria. Malaria is required, okay. And uh, so you'll yeah. wanna talk to your travel health clinic and, and they can give you the exact vaccinations that are required or um, recommended, and then you can decide from there. Yeah, and I don't know so if there's you wanna... very little, yeah, there's very little activity involved. Getting in and out of the vehicles, normally what they do is the safari vehicles, they park that next to a raised platform, depends on the lodge but they also have little steps to help you get in and out. And for people with real difficulty, they sit in the front next to the driver, which is like getting into a normal vehicle. The vaccinations, yes, we still have um, malaria in the Kruger region only, but you, you're going in the low season. I can't tell you not to take it. Go to your local GP or physician, ask him what, what tablets they suggest. Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Botswana is, is malaria-free as far as we know, but they're trying to eradicate malaria altogether in, in, in South Africa as well. Um, vaccinations um, with COVID, we do not have the laws yet. That's the second question as well, and maybe refers to the same question as well. Um, we have only started rolling out our vaccinations now. We do not have laws or rules in place that you've got to be vaccinated before you can enter. Um, we have people coming into South Africa who are not vaccinated because South Africa is open. We've had our first tour group back in South Africa from Europe. They're in Johannesburg area tonight. Tomorrow they go off to Victoria Falls. And they were not vaccinated before they came, but very strict protocols um, at every venue. Um, your temperature will be checked before you board the vehicle in the morning. Um, and you'll have uh, disinfectant everywhere. Before you go into your hotel, your temperature will be checked all the time. So um, at this stage, you, it's, there's no law that you have to have the COVID vaccination before you can enter. Things can change, folks. Uh, that is all fluid, as we know. Yes. Uh, and I and, think and... that... Nope, go ahead, sorry. You go. 
No, no, no. I, I think say, we've covered the Margaret's yeah. question as well, the activity level. Yes, perfect. Yeah. And I was just going to say things are continually changing and we are monitoring the situation as we as we get closer. So we will uh, keep everyone up to date with um, any rules or regulations that come in that that require a vaccination or or that kind of thing. Um, Jacqueline suggests okay. Antarctica. Um, actually, we are we are in the process of looking into an Antarctic expedition. I see Coral smiling. She's uh, <laughs> super excited about that one. So that one uh, you can stay tuned for. Jacqueline, uh, Margaret, we answered your question. Um, Kathy, yes, you will be able to watch this later. Uh, you can visit our Facebook page and we will also be sending the link in the email um, follow up in the next couple of days. So you'll be able to find it there too. Robert asks, is there a balloon ride option? And uh, Glenn can probably answer this better than me, but I believe in Victoria Falls, there is an opportunity to do an optional balloon. No, there, there's no? no balloon riding in in Victoria Falls. We do have balloon riding to the, um, and you can do that on your leisure day when you're in Johannesburg. It's a bit of a drive to the east, uh, to the west of Johannesburg is the best opportunity. And it's called Bull Harab's Balloon Safari. Bull Harab, and you might want to Google it. Um, it's not included, but there is an option for you to, to do a balloon ride. Um, this is not East Africa, which they do balloon riding over the Maasai Mara and over the Serengeti. That is not allowed in, in Southern Africa. What okay. is the power? Do we need an adapter? The power is 220 volts. You need an adapter for your plugs. So in South Africa, we have our own three prong, prong as we call it, round plugs. But we also have the European two-point pl uh, plugs that we use for all our mobile phones. The European style two-point. Um, you guys use the same as what the USA is. Some hotels and lodges have those adapters, but you can buy the adapters on arrival, or you can try and source the adapters before you leave your country at the airports or at travel shops or luggage shops sell them as well to, to have the adapter. To have the um, converters. You don't need any converter. It's 220 volts um, up our electricity. Will we okay. see giraffes on this tour? Most definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do hope so. Giraffes are very popular and most beautiful, beautiful um, uh, animals. Yes, that's and, great. Uh, I will mention that uh, with your documents, you will get a, a detailed document that states currency, vaccination information, um, adapters and converters, all that kind of stuff. So you will have all that information ahead of time. And then also with your tour director giving you a call, you'll be able to ask any questions that you're unsure of. Um, and there's several stores in Regina that sell the adapters. And so you can grab that all um, before, you, before you leave on your tour. Um, Janine asks, what do you have for single travelers options? So we do have a single, uh, single traveler rate and uh, that will be in the, you can visit our website and find that out or you can uh, see it when we send out the email with the, with all the information on the tour. And then, Lynn asks, yep. Sorry, I was just going to say that, that uh, on the singles that we uh, quite often will pair singles together as well. Maybe just go into that a little bit. Yes. Yeah, so um, if you're looking for a traveling partner, you can definitely let us know and we will we'll keep your name on file. You can book your deposit. And then um, if we have someone else that, that is looking for a partner as well, um, always same sex. And, uh, and we'll contact you both and we'll get you in touch and you guys can and talk and decide whether you think it's a right fit. Um, if it is, then we book you guys as a double and then you save the single supplement cost. So that's always a, a really nice option for people. Uh, if you want to have your own room, that is totally an option. With this tour, we have very limited uh, single rooms available. So I do suggest you book early if you want your own room um, because they are very limited on this tour. But uh, there is the option for, for sharing if, if you wish. And however, that is not guaranteed, but uh, but it is, it is worth a shot to, to try that. So, um, and Lynn asks, will there be a Zoom presentation on England, Ireland, Wales, and Scotland? Uh, so currently we don't have any tours that do uh, those areas with Ireland uh, with Women Explorers, which will be on the 19th. So two weeks from now, um, we don't have any tours that visit England, Wales, Scotland. 
um, but that is something I can do for future future tour ideas, and uh, we'll we'll keep everyone posted on that. And I think that was um, it. That that that's uh, all of them. Yeah, um, Carol asks in the chat. Um, I have a great fear of snakes. Do I have to be concerned about snakes in the hotel rooms or other potential places? <laughs> I sure hope not in the hotel rooms. But uh, Glenn, maybe you can take that one. Uh, I also have a fear of snakes, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> Me too. And May month, it is much cooler and snake, snakes go into hibernation. Um, you, I hardly see snakes on safaris. Um, and you won't have snakes in your rooms because those rooms get cleaned daily and get closed once the, the uh, ch chambermaids have left the room again. I've never had a snake in my room. The most I've had in my room on safari was a frog in the bathroom. <laughs> but um, no, you, you might not even see a snake in the month of May because they're going to hibernation because it gets cooler during the day. As we know, they warm-blooded or cold-blooded uh, reptiles. Um, yeah, okay. I'm also petrified of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's a, a, a popular fear. Um, and then Caroline, what's the cost? Uh, so that will be on our website, westworldtours.com, or in the email that will be coming to you in the next couple of days. From uh, Facebook, uh, Leanne, we've covered most of the questions that, that have already been done, but there was one that I just wanted to read because I, I thought it was pretty good. And this is a, a testament to, to Glenn, I think. It's, uh, this is from Leslie, and she put on our Facebook Live. Never thought I would travel to Africa, but this certainly has changed my mind. Wow. So you did a good job, Glenn. That's great. And I agree, Glenn, come on, this is, come. Um, is great. Yeah, it, uh, but Africa has always been on my bucket list, but, but just seeing and hearing, you know, firsthand, it just it's creeping to the top. And, and you know, with all this uh, COVID, you know, I'm just itching to get out there, as I'm sure many of you joining us today are too. And uh, I know we, Coral is itching to get away. So we welcome the Canadians in our country. We love okay. the Canadians. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, if there is no more. There's two more uh, questions. Oh, is there? there? Okay. No, that's okay. Let me. There. Okay. Uh, what is the hottest and coolest temperatures to expect at this time of the year? So in May, because we're in different parts of the country, Cape Town, the coolest it's been um, since last week was around about 13 degrees at night. It didn't drop below 13 yet. And the hottest Cape Town got in the last week was 28. Today is about 22, 24 out there. It's pitch dark at the moment. Um, Johannesburg in the Kruger region is a bit warmer. Their temperatures are around about, I'd say, 14 to 15. And I know that the Kruger this morning was still 30 degrees. Um, and then it gets warmer the further north you go into Zambia, Livingston, uh, the Victoria Falls and Botswana. It gets warmer. Remember, I'm not the weatherman and weather changes, but... <laughs> That's that is what it's last week. It was very cold in Johannesburg. My sister lives there and they were down to six degrees. But this week, again, it's 13 to 14 degrees. It's the changing of the seasons autumn. Um, but yeah, you're going to bring a wind wind jacket. You're going to bring comfortable shoes. You're going to bring a hat. You might bring a beanie for the cold, for the mornings to cover your head and your ears. You might bring light gloves or thin gloves, not the most expensive ones because you're going to the bush. Did you keep your fingers warm if it's cold in the morning, but it warms up during the day. Um, Perfect. Yeah, no, that's great. And and all that, uh, the packing, we have a little packing tip uh, with our document as well. That kind of gives you all what Glenn has just said about bringing maybe a toque for the morning and your mitts and a windbreaker and that kind of thing. So that's great. Um, Lynn asks, where do you fly out of as a group? Uh, so currently the flights have not been booked for this tour because it's uh, too far out. We can't book them quite yet. Uh, generally in the past for this tour, it would be out of Calgary and it would be a direct flight from Calgary to London or Frankfurt. And then you would transfer as a group. So everyone would meet in Calgary, whether that means you need to fly in from a different city, drive from a different city. Everyone meets in Calgary, gets on the flight, and then we would transfer uh, or do your connection in in uh, a European country before arriving in uh, 
in Johannesburg. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, um, then we will wrap up. And if you do think of a question, um, you know, after you, you've, uh, you know, had time to think about it a little bit or looked at the itinerary, please feel free to email us at information at westworldtours.com and we can get you um, an answer or we can be in contact with Glenn and he can give us uh, an answer and we can get back to you as soon as we can. Um, so I just wanted to thank you, Glenn, again, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we really appreciate your knowledge and, and sharing um, Africa with us this morning this evening pleasure. for you it's, and it's our uh, pleasure. Yeah, it was great and coral thanks again for for coming and joining us as well and uh you know walking us through the the international tour part of it thank you it's my pleasure so uh fantastic uh, listening to glenn this morning uh, great job glenn and uh everyone listening out there i would so love to share this tour with you i really would so we look forward to traveling again that's great thank so you very much, much everybody Thank you. Take care, everybody.